It's a good question because it really comes down to the risk is tied to the exposure. If five people see a movie, then the risk is low. If 10 million people see a movie, the risk is high. Something could be on YouTube, but only have 500 views. And so 500 people have seen it. So the risk is fairly low. So regardless of the method of distribution, it's really about just the volume of people that have seen it. The more people that see it, if someone has been wronged or their intellectual property rights have been used in the production without their permission, they would only contemplate a claim if they know about it. So it's really a question of visibility and exposure. The one thing is with respect to an online platform that is easy to self-upload, self-distribute, such as YouTube. There are other remedies that one can take uh, that would not be available otherwise. So for example, if someone, a third party, has their intellectual property infringed, a piece of artwork was shown uh, on a feature film without their consent, if they see this on YouTube, they can simply report it. Individuals have reporting rights for intellectual property infringement or copyright infringement that would ultimately result, in most cases, in the takedown of the content. So the feature film might actually be taken down just because somebody clicked a few buttons and completed a very small form online. If a film is a Hollywood blockbuster and it's exploited theatrically, if someone sees it and they're upset by the same infringement, the remedies in which they can basically pursue are not exactly limited, but more complex and costly for them to do so. That would be the major difference, I would say. There is that added layer and ease for individuals or entities that have been infringed upon to file a report and get that content taken down, which could significantly impact the future, the prospects of the film generally. Mm -hmm.